So Susan, I'm going to turn it over to you and I'll let you do the recording. Thank you for being here today, by the way. I really appreciate it. <laughs> so um, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Susan Kelly and I'm from, uh, I teach ESL at RIRL. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of different things today on the screen. So I will not be looking at the chat. Much. I will leave time at the end for questions, and um, and I invite you to ask questions uh, at the end. And I just think I will get all the things kind of a little bit mixed up if I. Mm -hmm. okay. And if and I'll just add, Susan, before I mute myself, that you know I'll try to keep an eye on the chat a little bit, and if I see something that's like, wow, you really need to know this, I'll try to point that out to you as okay, well. Okay, great. great. So um, I, Joan asked me if I would speak about uh, distance learning using, using textbooks that students own. Oh, I guess I'm getting my, wait a second. And uh, so I am going to talk about that. And so the first thing is why, why, why use textbooks? And, um, you know, we usually think about textbooks as that, you know, as something that we used back in the day. And uh, so let me just answer that question. And um, I, when I first met with my students, when after this whole coronavirus thing started, I, uh, I was you know, just catching up and getting to know how they were feeling, what they were doing. And a lot of them were feeling really uncertain, just like we were. And I think there are extra concerns for immigrants about what's happening, what's going to happen, to stimulus money, you know, apply to immigrants or whatever. So I felt like, um, you know, all of our students have textbooks uh, at our school, the ESL students, and I felt like it would be good to use, uh, go back to our textbooks because they're familiar. Um, so all of our ESL students, uh, when they register, are asked to buy the textbook, which is $40. And so we are really fortunate to have a really user-friendly and engaging textbook. Uh, the ESL teachers get together in the summer and decide like what's going to be a really good uh, textbook to use and we did it I think this year it's extra good so our textbooks include the book workbook books with paper and our online activities embedded listening activities reading activities throughout speaking activities that are really relatable to what we're doing and prompts for interesting writing activities at the end of each unit. So you can see we have, we this year are using Cengage Publishing, and these are the two books that I'm using in my classroom. So the great, I think what makes them extra great is that they have, Cengage has teamed up with National Geographic Learning to put these books together. So they have really wonderful pictures, a lot of engaging content, and the pictures are really, uh, extra great, um, not like regular textbooks that I've seen in the past. So I really like them and the students seem to like them too. So uh, because now we're using textbooks, every time we have a class meeting, students come ready to learn. They bring their books, workbooks, notebooks, everyone has access to the same materials. And so like I have my book, they have theirs, we're looking, you know, turn to this page and we're all on it. So it's familiar. It's like, I feel like it's like sitting in a virtual sh circle, sharing ideas and learning together. And so I've had lots of student participation, lots of camaraderie. It, um, it's really been working out really well. So I wanted to show you an example from the life book. This is an example of one of their pictures and part of the reason I like it so much. So this is a sample photo um, from Life 3, which is the book that I use, and the title of the unit is Challenges. So they have this picture, which I think it's just like really an interesting picture, and students are going to look at that and say, oh, well, what's this all about? And, um, you know, have questions about it. And so, and here you can see the vocabulary. They talk about, um, you know, what two heads are better than one. So it's something about um, idioms. And, but looking at this picture, I think it invites students to think about, well, what is the reading going to be? What is the topic? And as it turned out, this was kind of a lead-in to the story about two men who had, were mountain climbing. 
And so their challenge was they were mountain climbing, they went up to the top of the mountain and the weather changed, it got bad. And so um, then they were going down the hill, they were attached by a rope and then one of the men slipped. So the impossible decision that the other guy had to make was, do I let him go and fall down the hill or do I pull him back up? And uh, I mean, he couldn't pull him back up, he was too heavy and so he um it just like does he let him go or does he go down with him so it was very engaging uh you know this story that and, and students really thought a lot about it so um life three this book integrates real life interesting stories i think it does at all the different levels while also presenting grammar vocabulary listening speaking and writing that we all need so I'm going to do a little um, demo on, let me see, let me see. It's funny, could you do these things and get ready in, um, okay, so demo. This is uh, something that the publisher also has uh, a presentation tool. So this does not work on Chromebooks, but I had to, so I got another more powerful computer that it worked on. So this is this is pages of the um, the text. And so oh, when I'm speaking to the students, I can use this. So uh, the, on this page, let me just move. Some of the things are different when I'm now presenting. So I can put this up on the screen. I have my book. They have this page in their book. But I want to just show you that um, one of the features is they have listenings. This is telling true stories. So all I have to do is the teacher is click this box. Hi, Mark. How was your camping trip? It was great in the end, but we had a terrible time at the beginning. Why? So I won't make you listen to the whole listening, but so the students will listen to the listening, then we'll come over here, they'll answer their questions. One thing that I have had to do uh, is get a little comfortable with it just being silent for a few minutes because I'm used to when we're in class have you know everybody's always working with a partner working together so um, they but they do I just see them put their heads down and they're working on the answers and then we just share together people are really good about taking turns sharing their answers and um, muting themselves when uh, it's not their turn so it's been working out really well and so then to just take this activity a little further, this part is listen again, complete the conversation with the word you hear. So you can see that the text here is all, the conversation is all written out. So now the students, I will play the listening, and the students Hi, Mark. will fill in the How places. How was your camping trip? It was great in the end, but we had a terrible time at the beginning. Why? First, we left the house late. And then after only half an hour, the car broke. So you can see that the conversation here, they're going to listen as it's read and fill in the empty spaces. Uh, what is missing in the conversation? And so I always feel like if someone wants to hear it again, that's good. I mean, I'm fine about doing that. Also, one thing that I've found working online is that everybody has a good seat. So when we're in class, some people are in the back of the classroom and maybe couldn't hear it as well. So here everyone has a good seat. So they will um, take as many times as it takes for everybody to fill in their answers. We'll check them over. Then down here, they're telling us more about what are the words that were left out are part of their words that indicate sequencing, all of these things right there. So then we'll come up here and so we're getting prepared to practice this conversation. So with pronunciation, so they have some really good listenings on pronunciations. Like how do you sound when you ask a question? So One. they have. Why? And students would repeat. Two. Really? So we're talking, we practice that for a while and then we come back to the conversation. And so I just ask um, for volunteers who would like to be A and who would like to be B. And so the students uh, practice the conversation. And I have had 100% uh, participation in doing this. They all want to um, read their parts. So we're getting all that speaking practice in. 
So after everyone has had a chance to do that, we'll move over to this section where instead of reading someone else's story, they'll tell stories. So they give us some starters, which we might want to use. I know when we did this, I told a simple story and then students volunteered and they told stories about, you know, some kind of adventure, something like that in their lives. And everybody was good. Everybody was into it. So the next thing was to take this whole thing about stories and adventure and take it into writing and reading. So, um, you know, we asked them first to think about, you know, stories and that they've read or that they know. And um, then we have this reading here, Boys Survive 50 Days at Sea. And as you can see, it's only two paragraphs, so it isn't that long. But, and it's like got really cool illustrations on the paper, which I think really pulls the students in. So I asked students for volunteers who would like to help read this. And one student read, you know, the first paragraph, somebody else read the second. And then we go back, answer these questions that are these important questions that needed to be answered in the story. And, uh, and again, give them a few minutes to think and then uh, go over them together. And so then we're like really into the meat of the story. What happened? What was the problem? And I found that even different people had different answers, which is good. It gave us a more, a fuller interpretation of what happened. And so the next thing they had to do was take this story and they had to uh, put it in order of what happened. And so they are showing in the text, the five part structure of writing. And so, this is an interesting, engaging story. They then work on what part is what, putting them in order, and then we go over that. And so this lesson, so of course, you know, it took longer when we were doing all this. Um, but then the culminating activity with this is to lead them to writing. So, and so we're asking them to write their own short story. I told them they could use the story that they told if they wanted to, or if they had another story that they wanted to write about, that was great. And so, but to follow these guidelines using this structure, using the same kind of uh, transition words as they did in the story. And so it ended up working out really well. So I just want to show you back on the slides. Oh, I'm on the wrong slide, but let me see. Um, that giving them writing activities you know, now that we're not in a person-to-person -person classroom, I just take it and I put it on Google Classroom. So we talked about uh, what was needed for them to do on the, while we were in class, but then I told them that I would, as soon as class was over, put the assignment on Google Classroom. And so uh, I will show you an example. So in my classes, I've all know how to use Google Classroom. We've used them before, but I find that now that we're doing distance learning, we use them a lot more and for more important reasons. So this would be each class has their own. Yeah, I don't know why this is working this way. Wait a second. This is OK. So each class has their own. And so I just told them I would put the assignment in Google Classroom. They just need to go to their classroom, find the assignment. So when this was due, I put this at the top of their paper. They come and click the assignment. They can see there are the instructions of what they have to do. And then, uh, and another, wait a minute, I can't see, get my controls. And so, but the important thing with writing is to always attach a document. So they are given, each of them have a document they can open. Here again, they are going to see the directions for what they have to do. And, uh, and then when they're ready, after planning, they're gonna write their story right here. So the cool, the great part about Google Docs in writing is that it will underline, you know, it will show you in red or something if you've spelled things wrong or grammar wise, but it gives them a great place to write on the computer and do what they can. So when they are finished, they will come over here and share it with me. So they share it to their teacher, then I will get the copy. When I get it, I can look it over, see I can write comments, just regular comments if I want to, 
and I can use the editing mode, which is really awesome. So I can make changes myself or make suggestions for um, spelling, for uh, grammar, or anything that I think. So if I, when I'm doing suggestions, then these comments will come over along this side. And so then I will, when I'm finished, I also always give them comments about how good it was, but give them suggestions for how they might improve it. And um, so then they get it from me, not in class, on their own, decide what they want to do with it, then they can send it back to me and I can go back to them. And so for this assignment, uh, that people were editing their thing and then we, um, together on our next class, people uh, shared their stories with each other. So it ended up being a really a great experience. So I wanted to show you a few other things that we, I have been able to do with um, Google Classroom in this distance learning. Another feature of the Lifebook is that they have grammar exercises. And so they have them, the way the version we have only has them accessible to the teachers. So um, I, yeah, I just have to copy them one, one at a time for students and I can, they can, I put them in their Google Classroom, then they just go and, wait a minute, I just need to move these pictures. They just go and can you know, open one, and these will be the grammar point that we're working on in class. So, are you spending lots of time at the gym? No, not much. They pick their answers. I don't have any spare time, and uh, I have the same problem. A few of my friends. Now I'm just going to pick any answers. I don't know what they are. But anyway, when students are finished with this, they can submit. And the computer and the program is going to tell them what, were, what is right and what is wrong. This is not something that comes to the teacher, but this is good practice for them to see what they're doing. So um, whatever's wrong, if they are not sure any answers they've missed, they can just click show answers and it will have them show the answers. So as you can see, and this is just one unit of our book, we have all these different grammar activities. I want to just show you one other kind. So this one has listening. So the student is just presses the listening and they're going to do similar to the activity that I showed you in the book. They are going to fill in. Shall we go to see a movie? Yes, okay. A movie. What do you want to see? So the same kind of thing at the end they would submit and show their answers. So students really like this. And uh, I was just putting on the units that we have done since we started distance learning. And then a student requested that I put them all on <laughs> for every unit we've done. So I always figure that's a good thing if students want more, more classwork, more grammar practice. Another thing that we have on Google Classroom that is great, um, this book that we use also shows some videos. And so if someone misses the class when we show the video or they just want to see it again, I can put a link for that in Google Classroom as well. And so then they can come, they just click this button, and then they have the video. Two and a half minute video that uh, was the basis of, let me see, let's just wait. This is my friend, Alistair Humphries. He's an adventurer and a- So it's really a cool part of the life book that it has all these different things and I can make them accessible to my students while we are together meeting and while when we are separated. And so they really, it's really been a great feature. So it has the grammar videos I can put on Google Classroom, writing assignments, videos from class. And as I'll show in a little while, we also, um, we use it for Quizlet assignments, but I'll show you that a little later. So the other book that we are using in our class uh, is English in Action. And English in Action is from the same publisher. It has a lot of grammar practice, which is good for basics. It has interesting readings, and a lot of their readings are about civics. And civics is very interesting to uh, our immigrant students, you know, learning about American history, about the government, about expectations of how things happen. So I found that the students really enjoy these readings, and I, I think they're great. 
They're also, again, listening activities, writing, and vocabulary. So all the necessary things for ESL students. So I wanted to show you this picture. So when I had mentioned that one of the things I really love about this book, and I think our, the other teachers at our center feel the same way, one thing I really love is the pictures. And so this is a picture that, uh, full page to start a unit that we were working on. And I love this picture because I feel like you can feel how cold and fresh the water is. You can feel the power of the waves. And I just think it invites students into like, what is this all about? Why is this lady swimming? What does that have to do with health? So I just really, I really like these. And, uh, and here's another example of a picture from the book that they're, uh, the article is on healthy lifestyle. So they're talking about health and, and then this particular article was how air pollution can make asthma symptoms worse. And so they use this real life photograph that illustrates um, this article. And so I, I love it because, you know, anybody can understand what, what this picture is coming from and what they're talking about. So um, I really, I think this is also another thing that really invites people to come in and say, like, well, what is this about? So I'm going to give you a little, another example of, um, from the English and Action book. So I would tell the students, open your books to page 90. And before I had, um, before I had my uh, sharing tool here, that's what I would do too, but I would get to page 90 in the book. So this is the way it's set up. Healthy lifestyle right here. I just go to page 90. Or I could, you know, before I had this, I could also just use my book and that worked out fine too. So, um, we're all looking at the same thing. We start talking about this vocabulary. Okay, what are these words? What's new to you? What's different? Blanket, bleeding. So which words do you see in the picture? So they take the words and then look at the picture. Okay, bleeding. You see bleeding right here. Uh, blanket. This woman has a blanket being put over her. The blood pressure cuff. So all these words that they might know or might not, we connect with this with the picture. And so when we're doing this online, it seems to work really well. And we're all just looking at our books, looking at the pictures, or and now looking at the pictures I put on the screen. And so when they come to words that might be a, lot, a little harder, concussion, then we just talk about it. And what might that be? So after going over the words, going in with the picture, then we look at the next part. Somebody um, volunteers to read the directions. And then the students, using these words in the picture, put it together to complete these. The man's arm is bleeding heavily, so the emergency worker is applying a pressure bandage. And so uh, I might give them time to quietly work alone, or we might do it together. And really, they're really great at taking turns about um, everybody is, is just really good. So after we finish that, then it's time to listen. So the listening for this is listening to the story that exactly happened in the um, thing. Sorry. The accident. There was a bad accident at the intersection of Maple and Central Avenue about 10 minutes ago. A woman went past the stop sign and hit another car. A witness who saw the accident immediately called 911. The police and two ambulances were at the scene of the accident a few minutes later. So they're seeing, okay, all this action is happening, and then the listening is describing it. And so then we come up here. These are questions, specific questions about the accident that just happened. And so using what they heard, what, you know, what are the man's injuries, and I will usually give them some quiet time, like whatever they need four minutes or something, to just jot, jot down some answers, what they think um, is the answer, what the injuries are, what each one of these are. And then we will get back together and, and what I do when they are ready, you know, if we have a small group, people can just raise their hand because everyone will have their camera on to see them, or they can always use the chat box to say they're ready. So we use both of those. So, and then we go over those answers. And then using the same listening again, we will uh, play it and the students will be looking at true, false, 
not enough information. So preview the questions, give them a minute to do that, and then we'll do the listening again, reading along, and they do true, false, not enough information, and we go over that. So all of these activities in this book just generate a lot of uh, participation, and the students have really liked it. And then we go on to some grammar, and then the next page that I wanted them to do for homework was this uh, asthma reading. But the asthma reading was had some difficult words in it. So I didn't want to give it to them for homework if it wasn't going to be something that they could feel good about. So let me go back to my slides. And so this is all about that lesson. It was really good. Uh, so when, so using all the vocabulary, health vocabulary can be uh, challenging anyway, but certainly when we're talking about medical terms to do with asthma, that was you know more difficult. So I wanted to assign the reading about asthma for homework, but I knew there was going to be some challenging vocabulary. So I cre created a Quizlet set using 17 terms that were in the unit that um, related to asthma and health. And so let me just click, let me show you the unit we, I made. The, the set. So this is with with um, Quizlet. Yeah, I can't see the my thing up the side. Okay, with Quizlet you can you make um, sets, all different kinds of sets. So this I wanted to show you. So now that we are doing distance learning, I will. I took. The last thing we did, I shared my screen and shared this, all this vocabulary. So in Quizlet lessons, you see inhaler and then click, and then somebody will read what is an inhaler, look at the picture. Okay, then the next word, swollen. Swollen, I'll have them repeat. Click on it, and they have a picture of swollen. You know, swollen's kind of an unusual word in some cultures, and I know a couple of students had trouble understanding what is swollen. So I think, like, for this, it's like you get a great picture. Oh, yeah, bigger, abnormally expanded. So, um, so we keep going on. Crutches, also, when you put a picture to it, it's great. So I went through the class, and we had, I had people take turns reading, and we went through all this vocabulary. And so then I told them for homework, I want you to, I will put this lesson in your Google Classroom because that class has their Google Classroom too. And so for homework, please go to Google Classroom and study these words. So I wanna show you uh, some examples of what you can do in Quizlet. So for every set that you make up, first have a set of flashcards, which I was showing you, and they can do those, learn, ask you, these are all ways to practice using the word, practice spelling the words, like for, um, for this one. So it shows me the picture and I have to write on this line, what is the, um, what is the word? So it will tell me, oh, I'm correct, it was pale. So then enter, and here we go, inhaler again, I see the picture. I'm going to write it in and um, enter correct. So then if I want to hear the word inhaler. Okay, so that reinforces that for the student. So this one is a little harder. So it's like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what this this one means. So I might say, I don't know. And I can click this genetic. Oh, genetic. And genetic. Then, and then they want me to, the student to copy, and I spelled it wrong. Copy the word, genetic, enter. Okay, so that is the, so they have all of these different, I'm having a hard time with my thing here. So spell is also one of their practices that you can come here. Irritants. Irritants, same thing, you have to type it in, press enter, and then go to the next one. So each one of these practices are doing these exercises with all 17 words. 
So after you've done, done those, then it's, um, there's a place for a test. So and all of this is done uh, for the person alone. So redden, swollen, warm, and often tender. So you're going to write down whatever you think that answer is. This grow beyond outgrow. Some people outgrow. And so for this, you go all the way down and answer all the questions. And so they have matching. They have multiple choice, all of these. And so when you finish giving your answer, you just click check answers and it will tell you how you did. So since I only answered one question, I got a 6%. But most of the time students will get um, 90 or 100 before they're done. They wanna get all of the answers right. And also during any of this, they can uh, write notes and have their notes to help them in their practice. Another thing I just want to show that uh, is a really fun part of Quizlet is you, with the same words, you will take the, um, here we have the definitions, like uh, they have the word concussion and injury to the brain. Okay, when you get the right one, they are going to, if you click it, and then the other one will disappear. So you want to get them all to disappear and your time will be recorded. And what can be fun about this is I know when I was first checking out this lesson to make sure everything worked really well. I, um, I, so I got a score. And so after I had assigned it, it was really fun. I got a message from uh, Quizlet to tell me that one of my students had knocked me out of first place and had a better score, which was great. I was happy to hear that. And I wanna show you Quizlet Live. So Quizlet Live is, we have done these in our in-person classes for a while. They're a lot of fun. Um, so. Uh, everybody's kind of in a race in, cl in the in-person classrooms. Uh, we see a screen like this, people work on teams and they're figuring out the answers to questions to do with the vocabulary. So um, I didn't know how is this gonna work now that we're in distance learning and because everyone has to work as an individual, you can't work as a team when you're online. And so I um, decided to give it a try. And so, the students have to have their laptop and they need to have their smartphone with them. So on their smartphone, they just put in their browser, quizlet.live, and then they put in this number. And they put in this number, they can, and then they have to put in their name or a fake name, whatever. And then when um, I have, you know, players, then it's all gonna give us um, a quiz, everyone's gonna play, and they love it. It's been amazing, even online. I, I think it's one of those things you need to try and set it up and do it with your students to really appreciate, but they love it. I've had a student, you know, email me late at night and say, please make us more lessons so we can do another Quizlet. So uh, Quizlet is really a great reinforcer of skills that we're trying to teach. So I use uh, Quizlet Live, I use all of them, and uh, it's really, really been fun. So, um, Quizlet, the benefits, uh, teach new vocabulary. I know they also have units on social studies, science, maybe math, so people who teach GED might also like them. Uh, students can work on their own pace to learn the word sets. Varieties of activities reinforce their learning, and then they join together in class to do Quizlet Live, which is really fun. So we used it in our in-person classes, and now we are loving it in our virtual classes. That they just want more, so that's great. So if you want to uh, create a Quizlet account, you just go to quizlet.com. Uh, as you can see, this is like my opening page when I open Quizlet. And uh, it's very easy to set up an account. Just put in your name, your email. I don't think they ask for anything else. They've never sent me things. And then you can create um, your word sets. So this is the one I was telling you about, uh, vocabulary related to asthma and health. I have many more sets in there. Um, so I can use one of my old sets or I can search and see other teacher sets. I just put in, uh, like the other day I was looking for comparatives and superlatives. So if I just put that in, um, I would see what sets might be made that I might wanna use. Or certainly if you're working on history, 
or anything, just put in your topic, then you see the sets. You just wanna make sure they're made by a teacher because, and don't have any errors. So um, right now on Quizlet, the teacher accounts are free. I've never really paid for it anyway, but there are a few extra um, things you get now. Uh, so teachers can create their account and create their own study sets or search for a wide variety of sets, as I said. One of the other really cool things is that using Quizlet, you can link it to your Google Classroom. So uh, I wanna show you right here. So if I am, this is a set that I had made on comparatives and superlatives. Let me get this to go down, okay. So right here on the Quizlet page, the students don't have access to this, but teachers do. So this is where I might wanna add another word to the set. This is how it looks for teachers when they're creating it. Uh, if I wanna edit it, maybe change something, uh, add something, I could just click edit and then I can change whatever I want. And then this is the share button, which is really great. So if I, whether I'm using Google, Google Classroom or whatever I'm using, I just click this arrow and come here and I can just put in a student's email and send it to them. I can copy the link and send it that way, or I can share on Google Classroom, which is what I do all the time. So share on Google Classroom. And so then it's gonna come, see it right away, it connect links with my Google Classroom, share, I can choose my class. Out of all my classes, what class do I want it to go to? And then the action. Do I wanna make it an assignment, a question? So if I made it, I can make it an assignment or I can create material that just stays there and is accessible all the time. So create an assignment, go. And so this is, so I could just say this is Quizlet Grammar. Getting it all set for my students and then assign. And this will show up in the, so if I wanna view it, this is what it's gonna look like in their class. So when they go in, it's gonna, you know, there's a Quizlet Grammar lesson they just click away and there they are, the link is there and they click it and they're at the lesson. So it's really helpful how I can link Quizlet and Google Classroom and my uh, books, the textbooks I'm using at the same time. So another good thing about uh, Quizlet and Google Classroom is that they work really well on smartphones also. So um, they don't have to have uh, a laptop or any big system in order to make them work. And, uh, and they're really user-friendly on, the on the smartphones. So um, the students really like it and it's a good thing and it's free for students. Sometimes they put ads on it, but I tell the students to ignore them. Uh, it's a great learning tool. So, I know I think I went pretty fast <laughs> through all these slides, but uh, I just want to say each of my classes, um, now that we're in distance learning, meets two days a week for two hours at a time. When we first started distance learning, I thought, oh, I don't know how much time they're going to want to be sitting on the computer doing this. And so I started with like 45 minutes or an hour, but it quickly became clear that that wasn't enough time to do everything that we needed to do and people were really involved and in, in, engrossed in what we were doing. So we stuck with two hours now. And certainly sometimes in classes, you know, just like anyone else's classes, you know, they might have their kid come in and jump on them or an emergency happens that they have to take care of. And that's fine, that's life. And I just ask that people mute themselves. So our classes are smaller than before the shutdown because some people do have to spend extra time with their kids and um, helping them with their homework or whatever. And, but there's people who are in the classes who are coming are really consistent, They're coming all the time and doing their homework. So it's a really, it's been, it's been good. And um, I never thought that I would like distance learning, but I really have loved it. It's, 
it's been great. Uh, it's extremely interactive. Just like any classes that we teach that we need to change up the activities, the same thing is true with these distance learning classes. And part of what I really love is using these, these books that we have because they have a variety of activities and I can use those and I can also have students listen to listen on those or do activities or go to Google Classroom, go to Quizlet, use any of those, um, those tools. So I, at our center, we're particularly lucky that we have such great textbooks that are you know from the teachers end and the students end and i am using all the tools provided with our textbooks and they all are really good and very helpful and i would say that quizlet and google classroom provide additional support and easy access to practice that round out our classroom learning so all of what we do is connected and um, through and google classroom provides us that um, kind of a, I don't know what you call it, but the place where we keep everything we do. So it connects to the books, it connects to vocabulary, connects to everything we do, and students know to go there um, to find out what's happening. It's also Google Classroom is great for just um, leaving messages. So students might leave me a message and I'll uh, leave them messages about what's, um, what's happening in class. So. Um, Anyway, so that is my presentation. Is, are there any, if there are any questions, you can uh, unmute yourselves or I don't know if Joan has the, oh, the chat. I have the chat open now too. And I do, okay, I do Zoom with my students. So I know in the beginning I asked, um, I was asking people, what do you like better? Do you like Zoom or do you like um, Google Meet? And some people said that there were more features on um, Zoom, and so then I, that's what I started to uh, use, and so then I've been doing a lot of different trainings on Zoom to figure out the best way to use it. And um, so, uh, and so that's what I use. Um, do I, I have, the Joan asked, do I spend any time with students one-to-one -one going over their writing, for example? I haven't yet, but I will. I mean, as of right now, it's all been, um, through the chats and through the um, comments that I write to them. And, um, but that absolutely can happen too as we go along. And uh, I don't know, it says, one of the things you do in face-to-face -face classes is projects with students, for example. Yeah, oh, that's an, right. So one of the things we also have done in face-to-face -face classes and now is that I use, um, Google Applied Digital Skills has a whole, um, a whole big uh, group of lessons that you can um, do with students that are very user friendly using the G Suite. And so I have, since we started, um, since we have started the distance learning, I have assigned putting Google Classroom to write. Um, I know for one of them, it was like make a poster about your country and so um they would just uh you know use their you know use the assignment on apply digital skills and make it work so um they were that's really worked out well can people unmute themselves if they want to i think i'm going to un uh, we, we I'm can unmuting. all talk at the same time <laughs> i know i'm unmuting right now so if you can also mute yourself again. Does anyone have any questions? I see you have, we have one more question from Pat in the chat for sure. Okay. Okay. If you had to start using a book from start for an online class, would it have been as easy as it was because the students had already experienced with it? I think it really would have been fine as long as students had the book. What has been the real strength of this is they have the book and I have the book, so we can use it together. And if they didn't have the book, it would be very different. You know, then it's like, you know, they're just listening to me, which I don't want them to do. I want them to be using it and working with it. But a textbook as good as the one we have would work um, 
just if they, like if we were doing a summer class and we decided to keep with online and part of what students had to do was buy their book. And so then they would have it and bring it to class. So anything else? Joan? I was gonna give someone else a chance because I know sometimes finding your mute button takes longer than you like to admit it does. Um, I'm just wondering if if you're if you were starting this from scratch as a you know online class, brand new, all of that, what's the sort of warm up time or what is the some of the steps in the warm up part to get students used to doing what you're doing? Because you're doing a few things and and I'm sure once they're used to it, it just kind of keeps going. But what does that warm up or what does that beginning part look like? Well, I think it would be like having to do a lot of uh, demonstration online, but also asking them a lot of the things with Google Classroom will end when we use applied digital skills, they'll say, okay, you can be on this call and at the same time open a window that gets you into your Google, you know, get them to Google Drive and show them how to set up a Google Classroom. And uh, so just step by step and take the time and they would figure it out. And it would take a while, a little while, but if they're on the computer already, they can, you know, navigate to that step. It's, it, but you have to have a lot of patience and give them some simple things that are fun and easy and engaging to get them started. And also like, I think with Quizlet, uh, that's pretty easy for students to set up accounts. And, uh, you know, in doing it in class, that you can do all those different parts, showing them how to use them in class, and then they can do more with them at home. So, and I think it's like they just end up being fun. So, um, I think Christina has another question. So, all of um, my students, most of them, she said, do all your students have laptops or Chromebooks, or are they connecting to class on their phone? Some have definitely come to classes with phones, and um, most of them, it seems, have some kind of laptop that they can use. And so when we play Quizlet, um, I think then they borrow like their kids or their husbands or somebody else's their, uh, laptop so they have it. So we can play Quizlet Live if we're gonna do that. So most of them do have what they need as far as technology goes. And we've been lucky with uh, connections too. I mean, I think I worked on getting my connection better and uh, so then I can have more people and it's, it's worked out okay. So, anything else? So Amanda, Amanda, can you tell, have you used the books at all on, when you've taught distance learning? Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, I guess she's not answering. So anyway, we I'm have sorry. Okay. <laughs> I have I've just been using it on WhatsApp, so in a different way. I haven't been able to I will be uh starting tomorrow. Thank you, Christina. But um I think that I've just been kind of taking pictures of the pages and working with the books in that way. And I also, like you said, send the links to some of the grammar exercises to Google Classroom. That's yeah. been helpful. Yeah, I know I have, you know, in this presentation, part of it was just taking some pictures of the pictures. And, you know, you can always do that if you don't have the other presentation tools. And they respond well to it. So. For us, it was like lucky that we had that resource, but I think, I think it would work fine. I mean, it, having a book this good, if the students had it, and um, that you could make it work for, um, you know, without too much. Does anybody else have a question in the chat or anything? I'm curious. I'm curious about any takeaways. Is there? Um, I know every time people see, you know, a teacher doing something that maybe they are doing or not doing. Are there any takeaways that people are thinking? Huh? There's something I might want to try.
I, I'm definitely going to use the, the book in the way that Susan did in this presentation. I'll probably be calling you, Susan, for a little bit more help on how to access the pages and everything. But that, that's a great way to use it in the classroom. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier because the publisher gives us that presentation tool that wouldn't work on Chromebooks, but works on a more, I don't know what, it, a computer that has more power, or I don't know what it is, but um, it really is easy to, to use and you can show things and highlight them. And you have that for life and English in action? For both of them. They're those little, uh, yeah, I just yeah. plugged them in and then I could download them to my computer. But before I had those, I could just get, I just got the links that I had used in our regular face-to-face, person-to-person classroom and use those for listening and things like that. And that worked too. It was just like a lot more, um, a little more cumbersome trying to make sure I got all the links. But, uh, you know, but I think all of these things, like as we become more comfortable with the technology, uh, you know, we can click all the buttons and make them work a little better. So, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And What's your favorite part of all of this? Is, and I know this is pretty new. A lot of this is new and you started to try out some new things, but is there a favorite part? I'm always kind of curious. I think because I, I feel like we've kind of, you know, because students are, we're all going through this crazy time of pandemic together. And I feel that um, what we're doing in our class is kind of an anchor for people in their lives and they um, really enjoy working at making progress on their English and uh, sharing ideas, but also, you know, making progress on grammar and all these things. And I think for me also the, that they're all, they're willing to share, talk and participate, but that they, um, they ask for more work. They ask for more, <laughs> they want to do it. And uh, which is great. And I think they're really enjoying this. And I, and the textbooks do give us an anchor in what we're doing, but it also, I can then go off and do all kinds of things, you know, adding on Google Classroom or anything. And I think as they become more comfortable with the technology too, that um, it, it's working out well. And I know I have a few students that didn't want to, didn't start with us on distance learning at the very beginning, but I kept you know, contacting them, and a few of them have now come on board. I think it's like, you know, it's hard to hide when you're on an online class for students, and, uh, but I think they're seeing it now as a safe place, so it's working out well. Nice. So. so. Um, Kim also added something into the chat. Um, okay. I missed her. Yeah, so she talked about it being an anchor. And I'm wondering about new students would get up to speed. I do really think they would get up to speed if you had the grade. Um, so if a new, maybe if you're talking about a new student joining my class now, um, just because they all know each other, but they'd have to have the book. And if they have the book, we could make it work. And I would definitely be willing to work with people one-on-one -on -one to get them to feel more comfortable because we've all been there. So, um, Jones assistant will be sending an event. Oh, Progressive Latino. Okay, Christina said, did you need technology training to get to this point? And if so, how many hours? I've, I've been interested in the technology part um, for a while. So I was trying to do, I took a class last spring, Amanda and I took it with, um, you know, Rhode Island Adult Ed. But also, I mean, definitely, I had never ever used Zoom before. And Christina, I asked, I went to a few of your things to ask questions and just did a lot of trainings that were available on Zoom, went to as many things that I could to, um, to just learn as much as I could about, um, about Zoom, about all these other things, but also just kind of upgraded my own equipment so I could um, be comfortable. And I, somebody asked about USA Learns, and I have used USA Learns, and I like USA Learns a lot, and um, I have done that in Google Classroom. So for USA Learns, I would just add that as an assignment or as an option, and that's what I like about Google Classroom, all these things. They give the students options. You know, you may not like 
one thing, but there's the option of doing the other. So um, I think USA Learns is a great program and I would definitely add it to Google Classroom. I think it's better with some lower levels. So um, anyway. Hi, Susan. This is Christine again. Uh, sorry. Um, just thinking uh, for um, planning purposes, we don't know what's going to happen in the fall, but with uh, hopefully this experience will, will inform us how to move forward in preparing teachers and giving the tools and supporting them as much as possible. Same thing with learners and students. So on average, um, if, if this is hard to say, but in your experience, uh, how, how many hours do you think uh, for budgeting and planning purposes would we be thinking uh, for teachers um, starting newly hires or starting with online learning? Same thing with, with students. Um, do you think um, in terms to prep them well and, and to support them well? I don't know, I would have to think about it. I know like for me, I just spent, I don't have young children and I could spend as much time as I wanted so I just, did every training and did everything I could think of to be comfortable. But um, I think like now that there are some of us who are so comfortable using it, you know, I would just kind of be patient with people. I don't think I'm giving you a very good answer. I would have to kind of think through that, Christina, yeah. and, um, yeah. you know, but I know it's like it helped me to be comfortable with Zoom when I saw you were comfortable with Zoom. When I went to your some of your trainings and then and that's why for me I decided to just go with zoom because um you know I knew that I didn't want to if I to do google meet and zoom I wanted to find the one I was most comfortable with and just spend a lot of time you know using it and because I felt like if I need to be comfortable in order to make students comfortable you know so anyway okay thanks Okay, any other questions? Thank you for coming. And I hope this, I was, this was awesome. You're, you know, so, so much really good, I think, good information, practical information. And um, yeah, everyone's diving into this whole new thing. And I think it's tricky to figure out how much time each of us needs because I think we are all starting in a different place. Um, and maybe some, at some point that will normalize, but I'm not sure when that is. Um, but it's exciting to know that you weren't an expert to start. Oh, no, I was, I was far from an expert. <laughs> but, but I did Susan. what I could. To <laughs> Hello, Susan. What? Um, what's the maximum number of our hours for, for Zoom? If I ended up buying an individual membership, so um, but I, uh, I listed the uh, when I first started, I had the free version, which was forty minutes, and they would cut us off after forty minutes. But then I could just start another uh, class and just invite them right away. But when I bought the um, membership, which is month, uh, now they never cut me off. But I. I see. I think they are making it so um, that they're not having a limit now. I have seen that on the page. I don't know if that's true, how it's working. I'm asking, uh, that's good. I'm asking because I used it this morning and I used it for almost an hour, but usually yeah. we use it for 40 minutes. I was wondering, uh, wait, did they take my money out somewhere? I didn't know it or something. No, no. I think they just changed it because they realized it was popular. And they, I, think, I, think, I figured so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's really, no one's surprised. I know, I know. They're always trying to trick us. <laughs> so. That's real cool. I'm happy though. I'm happy. Okay. That's cool. All right. Thank you. You you sound so confident. Your 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 confidence is infectious. Wow. I, I wish. I I hope someday I'll look and feel like you. Wow. Oh, thank you very You're much. You're so cool. Thank you. I work really hard at it. I try to like. I want. That's how I feel about how the students will do. They'll do better yeah. with all this technology if I know what I'm doing. If I'm confused, yeah. and you know, then that's harder for them. So cool, <laughs> interesting. Thank you so much. I really You're very enjoyed. welcome. You're very welcome. Yeah. Christina, hi, Christina, how you doing? Hi, you may. How are you? <laughs> oh, you recognize my voice, huh? <laughs> Good to hear your voice as well. Wow, this is cool. like this. Okay, so does anyone have any other questions? 
I don't think there's anything else in the chat. No, no, I think you covered everything in the chat, so okay, you can wrap up and thank you, thank you, really appreciate it. I've learned a few okay. things here today that I need to that I need to look more into. So okay, thank great. you, appreciate it. Okay, thank you, thank you for coming, everybody. Thank you, thank you, Joan. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, Christina. Bye, bye. <laughs>